Welcome to the BFME 2, the rise of the Witch King on the patch 2.02 version 9.1 beta. This time on the map, Firin deal in a good against good matchup between two great players. We have the Alvin player, Irby, versus the Man of the West player, Solas. And it's going to be a double farm opening into the potential barracks. And here we have two Malone trees, barracks. And I believe he's going to build the third one. Yes, sir. And here they have also the third farm. So pretty much the same opening for both the players. It's going to be infantry heavy opening. But later on, we might definitely see, you know, horses, Gondor Knights, Rohirrim Warriors, Rivendell, uh, Lancers. Linden Horse Arches potentially in the lead game too. And the barracks has been finished. And soldier, you are soldiers of Gondor. And around this location, we have also Lorien Warriors. They are faster compared to the soldiers of Gondor. And they also, I mean, I like the new uh, details they added to the patch. That's pretty nice. Lorien Warriors have been recruited. And from the power points, we have Rallying Call for both the players. So buff is very important in this game, and you don't want to miss it. Don't draw, attention. don't draw attention. Okay, he's coming from the bottom side. It's the vision of the Elven player. He's not able to see quite a lot. He might be able to find the archer range around this location. But I like the opening from the Man of the West faction player, Solas, because he's getting some defense just for the worst case scenario. So you can use the soldiers of Gondor, which are coming from the top side of the map, for a more offensive playstyle, you know? But remember, the main faction is to build two structures for this, you know, archer range and also barracks. And the Alvin player can do this all from one single barracks only. You can recruit swordman, archer, pikeman, elite archer, and the ultimate archer. All of that from one single structure. And man needs, at bare minimum, two structures to do that. Rallying call. Is available. I mean, the only goal here is to destroy at least one of the structures, and he's building wall up, you know, to deny them the entrance. So they need to waste more time to commit, but I think the farm is going to be destroyed anyway. Ooh, the damage from the archers, though. Oof. Oh my god, level 2. Okay, and good defense, my friend. Good defense. Or... Oh, so close, but yet so far. Okay, also the Elven player was able to defend. But remember, it was only for, with one soldier. And the Elven player was going for an attack with two Lorien warriors. It looks like he want to creep this war clan now at the bottom side of the map. With archers and eventually the Lorien warriors. But in a, in a good way, you can creep this with a pikeman, you know? The Mephlon sentry unit from the barracks of the elves can do this quite easily by himself. So, we have a good army here from men. He has a good mixture between soldier, pikeman, and archer. And he's going for an attack, boys. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. Remember, rallying call is on cooldown for both. Nah, actually not. Man player didn't even use the rallying call at the first. Please. Ooh. Nice punishment with the horses, I like it. And he has only one battalion of archer against multiple that comes the buff advantage, which is creating a lot of momentum for the player. And he has he's the one who's glowing by the way, the yellow glow. And the pikemen are not where they should be, though. They are in the behind in the back, and it means the uh, the lancer can trample the soldiers over and over again with a great micro of the Alvin player Irby. Dealing a tremendous amount of damage. Heal is going to be chosen and used by the Man of the West player. He was still able to win this fight because of the army advantage and the buff advantage, obviously. And the Alvin player might get punished for this big time. He's going to go for more uh, Lancers. But remember, there are still two Rohan Spearman unit, units you need to avoid. It's for that reason you need to always aim to the on the enemy pikemen with your archers, you know? The Malone tree is going to be taken down around this location for sure, but he was able to defend this one, that's pretty good. But during all this time, the man faction's economy is remaining untouched. It means he can get easily more money, more command points, and stronger units. Transitions in a game like PFME 2, the Rise of Twitch King, is incredibly important, and you need to kind of take up, you know? You need to find the time to get your barracks to level 2, so you can recruit some tower guards instead of the Rohan Spearman units. You can recruit some rangers instead of the Gondor archers. And all of that will add more quality 
to your army, which will help you to win the battles way easier and dominate the game. The farmer has been taken now, that's good. After the first couple of minutes into the game, we have for Erby, the Alvin player, around 550 command points available. Um, he will be receiving this one though. And he has 7 power points in the bank. He didn't pick anything though. He didn't pick heal or the far side. And his opponent is around at 500 command points. And he has 3.5 power points collected. But he was also picking the heal after starting with the rallying call. So he has a power point advantage. But only a slight one. Okay, rangers. That's good. I like it. Level 2 archer range. Level 1 barracks. No heroes yet for either player on the field. The farm here in the front is of, of course very exposed and will be taken down first. But you need to be careful against the pikemen. The pikemen are hard countering the lancers and one of them has been damaged badly. Oh, be careful. I mean, with the good faction you can always build a well and then recover back to full HP. That's something evil factions can't do. But it's a very strong army over there, man. We have three ranger battalions. Remember when they get level 2, they will also unlock the long shot. Which will you know, kind of burst down the enemy units. Alvin armor is not very strong. The Lorian archers are kind of weak in terms of defense. And if the long shot lands on them, they will get wiped out. But I like the way he's pressuring this with the Lorian warriors. It's a very important farm. Does he have a rebuild from the spellbook? Yeah, he has rebuild from the spellbook. He will be using it. This farm over around this location has been taken down. But I believe the rangers with the combination of the pikemen should be able to deal with this current danger situation for men and good defense but now it's all about the counter attack buff advantage coming in handy and the alvin play building a well and a statue also there comes the long shot situation long shot will land like mentioned before it one shot the lorian archer army that's pretty good no more damage from a long distance for the elves and he's building a statue for leadership and also a well for the recovery for sustain you know but you don't, want to, you don't want to overcommit because this army is good against other armies, but it's not very strong when it comes to take down structures because it's mainly based on archer damage, which are not dealing any damage pretty much to the enemy structures. We have Faramir on the field, the only hero who is always there, you know, to show his quality. Let's see if we can do this in this game. And Barak's level 2 incoming. You can always go for the level 3 too. It will give you the chance to purchase or research to fire arrows for more DPS that also will make your damage against structures, you know, kind of crazy good. Rallying Coal is going to be used. It's a very important Malon tree you need to try to save. The Orion Arts are shooting now. They should be able to defend this, no problemo. The man player, knowing that he has no buff, uh, buff available for his own army and choosing to retreat, that's pretty, you know, pretty much the best choice I think you can make. Okay, this farm is going to be exposed and will be taken down by the Revenge Lancers. That's good. But that's a very strong army, no? no? I mean, we have Hydir up on the field. Hydir for Elves and Faramir uh, for the men. That means two Archer heroes, which are pretty much identical. You know, they can fight with Sword and Bow. Faramir can get mounted though, which Hydir can't. But on the other side, you have also the Golden Arrow, which is, I believe, the much more useful ability compared to the Captain of Gondor from Faramir. The global star always great, you know? But I like the more interactive playstyle from the Alvin faction player. He's always punishing his opponent. And also Glorfindel on horse taking care of this weak pikeman of the Rohan faction. That's why you need tower guards. Tower guards should be able to fight against the mounted heroes way better compared to the Rohan swimman units, which are only good at the beginning of the game. Paramium, on the other hand, is level 2. Warning arrow is a pretty powerful ability in this game. And, oh my god, he needs to be careful. You should not ride into the pikeman. The revenge damage is kind of crazy. And look at this punishment, dude. I like it so much. Boromir has been recruited. Look, the man player is kind of trying to... <clears throat> sorry for my voice. The man player is kind of trying to kind of force his opponent into a fighting situation, which he kind of is able to avoid, you know, which is pretty good for him. And uh, he's choosing to be a bit more annoying with his playstyle, you know? Get small squad of units, peasants and spearmen, and go for the economical damage exclusively. That's what's gonna bring you the lead. 710 command points against 600. 10 power points collected for men. Solas will choose the Tom Bombadillo from his spellbook. And his opponent has 8 power points. There comes Tom Bombadillo, special summon eventually in the army. No, he's gonna choose it to knock down Glorfindel on the ground. Glorfindel can't 
stand up anymore. Glorfindel, no heal available for elves. It's on cooldown. And Glorfindel is gonna be taken down. He's so slow because of the morning arrow. And Glorfindel has been taken down. The builder is gonna follow up later. And Tom Bombadillo with the phenomenal Sonic song. But that comes with Tom Bombadillo. What you can I can do better. And but the man player is able to avoid the Tom Bombadil's Sonic Song ability, unlike his opponent, and will be able to disengage. Tom Bombadil has not much time on the middle earth, he has only 45 seconds duration after the summon and has a very long cooldown of 6 minutes because he's so powerful. The stage has been saved and Legolas has been recruited. A more hero based playstyle which I really like to see. There comes Tom Bombadillo, special summon ability, the Sonic Song to wipe out the Pikeman. Boromir has to be careful because he will get knocked down, but Bombadil has to leave the Middle Earth as his time is over. Okay, that's a good fight for man. He's going for the marketplace for more eco. With the Grand Harvest, he will grow richer and richer and richer. And that's the main weakness of the Elven faction, the lack of eco-boosting abilities, you know? Every faction has something, but elves have nothing. No pillage, nothing that can boost the income from your resources. This is one of the two weaknesses of the Elven faction. This, obviously, what I just mentioned. And the second weakness is the lack of siege damage. Ooh, Eoma. Eoma, I mean, sorry. The army, though. I mean, that's why you need also Mirkwoods. Like, Mirkwood Archer from the level 2 could easily handle the ranger spam from... The opponent, who Elma and Eowyn, pretty annoying. <laughs> Mounted heroes in this game are super good against cavalry. Glorfindel has been revived. He's gonna use the one, uh, the Blade of Purity. Faramir is gonna be jumped. Oh my god, Faramir. Is Faramir fast enough to escape Glorfindel? He's an Elven hero against Man Hero. Get away here. He's gonna use the heal to save his captain. Boromir is also getting bullied by the Archer spam. And the beautiful trample, Farami is still exposed. And if Glorfindel hits, he's hitting very hard. Can he get mounted and can he get out? He's gonna use the warning arrow to kill Farami, uh, to kill Legolas. I mean, Farami has actually shown his quality despite he was dead. But he did his mission before getting killed. But man player has lost both Boromir and also Farami at the same time. So 9 power points for Erby, the Elven player. He's up to 8, 95 command points in total. That's pretty impressive. He has 10 power points now, and so last man of the West player is down to 700 command points, but it's still quite high at this stage of the game. And he has nearly 15 power points collected, which I believe is going to open the possibility of the eventual Rohirrim special summon, which can, you know, take down the fortress by themselves. The forge is coming for elves. It means he might go for the forge blades, heavy armor, or most importantly, the silverton arrows, which is one of the best abilities for a damage boost against other units, you know. The Malone tree is going to be exposed and taken down. This one has been defend defended, that's pretty good. Again, the same problem, you know, not too much structure damage, only tower guards are able... Oh, he's going to go for the ranger summon. Ranger summon have the le level 2 long shot ability available, but they have no fire arrows. Again, the same problem, the structural damage is not the greatest. Yeah, thank you though, in the formation. Oh, high gear is gonna be exposed. Spear throw. You. Uh, I am no man, high gear. Oh, beautiful punishment. What a trample, actually. He killed all the summon archers with the Divendel Lancer. That's dope. Glorfindel has been revived for the, for the fifth time or something. Legolas also shooting. He's level two. Struggling to get experience. Each level will make Legolas obviously way, way stronger. But once again, a good defense from the Alvin faction player, Irby. And now he has the advantage with the power points because the 15 power points have like a very long cooldown. This one is nine minutes cooldown. The, uh, the Ranger Summon, and that's a very long time if you ask me, you know? Saddle up, Lancers. Okay, almost 15 power points for Irby after the Tom Bomber deal. Tom Bomber deal is going to be available for the next big fight from both the players. And Glorfindel is level 6, he has the Wind Rider, he can't use the Bleed of Purity when he's mounted. Which kind of makes sense, otherwise this together would make him super OP. Look, 100% armor and 50% armor, so if you can stack this together, holy... You know, who's going to fight against you, bro? The answer is nobody, maybe Sauron. Maybe Sauron can do this. Maybe, maybe Galadriel, but that's all about it. He has returned. Faramir, to show his quality. Okay. I mean, this is still under control from the Elven faction, but he can only recruit the peasants. Let's be real here. Peasants, not super threatening, you know what I'm saying? 
And also, uh, Glorfindel is the fastest hero in the game with the Wind Rider. Spear throw, beautiful shot, 40. You get 10 for each kill. 10 power points for men after the Ranger Summon. And we have 15 power points for Erby, the Alvin player, after the Tom Bomber deal. There is a squad coming, Tower Guard, Ranger combination at the bottom side. They will be able to find this Malone tree, which has no defense, and it will be taken down. But now he's gathering a big army worthy of, you know, I don't know, elves, I guess. And heal is available, Rallying Call is available, Farsight is available, Tom Bombadil is available. So all the power points are there to be used. And now the question is, can he use it in a good way? Can he get the maximum out of this available summons and power points? 17 power points. But he didn't choose anything just yet. There is an annoying army. Tower guards are dealing good damage against structures. Now, oh, He went for the elven armor, by the way, on them. You can see the golden armor. And he also used Rallying Cold offensively. Also used it on the Revander Lancers. So the Grand Harvest animation, you can see it. It will help the man player to get a lot of money. Solas has a big army around this top side. And he has 13 power points. So he's only 12 away from a potential 25. Which, of course, you know it, I know it, can be game changing, can be game winning, and can be also game ending. Heroes for the defense. Um, Bombardier will be summoned, I believe, defensively. Yes, and offensively from the Alvin player. And that's a big commitment. Now, the main differential between this army and Sola's army is the structural damage they have the potential to deal. Because he has more horses, more pikemen, more stuff that can actually hurt the structures. While the man army is more about, you know, defending, uh, dealing damage to enemy units. Big commitment, 18 power points. Glorfindel is kind of getting bullied. Shield Medina has been used on Eowyn. It's a man against woman. Tom Bombadil are punching each other. Which Tom Bombadil is stronger? And the guy is celebrating because the other one had to leave. I mean, Tom Bombadil is generally so tanky that killing him seems almost to be impossible. So in most cases, I think it's the best call to just, you know, avoid him and dodge him for 45 seconds. This... Boromir, the last man standing, he's getting the passive, which is the last stand. Um, he is gonna be used. Ooh, long shot. Level 5 Legolas, pretty dangerous. 21 power points. And the Elven player has 30 in his pocket, but he didn't use any of them. So he has basically 15 and then he has 10 on top of that. But the man player is still leading the power point war against his opponent. He's, he has a range summon and he has 21 power points on top of that. He needs only 4 more. And in this situation, if you have 25 and you can use it offensively, it's actually a game-winning move. Because imagine an Earthquake or an AOD, doesn't matter. Both of them can deal tremendous amount of damage to the opponent. There comes the Mist from the Alvin player. He's choosing the Mist because, never mind, he went for the Cloud Break, for the Stun. Stun is pretty decent. It doesn't only stun the units, by the way, in this game. It also heals your allies and your own units. And replaces three dead units per battalion. That's pretty good. And you get healing 30 per second for 15 seconds. So 15 times 30, you know, that's 450 if I'm not mistaken. Quick math in my head. But 24 power points. So now we gotta take a look into the power points from Solas. Is he's gonna gain more and more during the fight? There is a Legolas who's super annoying to deal with. He's just way too fast for them, for the enemy units or heroes to be caught. Because the MM player playing without horses all game long. If he gets level 7, he's gonna unlock the arrow volley. That comes to stun from Boromi one more time. No resistance to fear, but EUD is gonna be choose from the spellbook now. And I summon you to fulfill your role. What say you? And the EUD is so pro, pro, you know, powerful. In, I don't want to say broken, but it's, I say powerful because it's able to generate for you so many more power points. So he summoned it and he got like five power points in an instant, you know? Like just like this, you know what I'm saying? And he went, finally went with the Rohirrim. And Tom, oh my god. Ooh, the damage with the knife fighter. He shall not see daybreak. 
Oh my god, he killed Eowyn before he died. Oh my god, the most valuable Legolas actually. He killed Eowyn before he died. And he almost killed Eomar too. Dude, Legolas low-key, a uh, top-tier hero there. I like it. 800 command points against 510. The Elven player lost all his army though. That's pretty unfortunate. You see the choice of the power points, which kind of bring you to the lead game, can be you know, game-changing. It could be the same situation also for Elves if he had Flood there, you know, or Sunflare. Both of them. Haldir is gonna get chunked by Faramir with the Warning Arrow. Warning Arrow description says it will slow you down. Which kind of gives you the chance to... Ooh, too much army there. Tom Bombadil, not Tom Bombadil. That's not Tom Bombadil, it's Glorfindel, sorry. He can't do anything. There comes the Rangers, I mean, for a second time into this game. And the damage against heroes, not too bad. Stun! And Glorfindel will not make it alive. Beautiful combo there with the stun, so they can't go for a trample. And the Rangers were able to kill them in a stun duration. And now full commitment. Gondor must stand as main player is able to dominate and beat the elves on the map feeding deal. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want to see more Rise of the Witch King tournament games or cast games in this channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also comment down below which games you want to get covered more on this channel. And leave a like also when you are doing this on your way, okay? I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always... Stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.